صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala tonight we're going to take a new chapter from the chapters of fiqh and we are studying the second volume of al-mulakhas al-fiqhi summary of islamic jurisprudence by our sheikh al-allama al-walid al-sheikh salih bin fawzan fawzan may allah preserve him the sheikh he said competition sabq competition in the sharia refers to a race between two animals or contests such as archery and shooting. Such races and contests contest are permissible according to the Quran, the Sunnah, and juristic consensus, as they may be used to improve ability. Allah exalted be, He says, and, pre- and, and the meaning of which, and prepare against them. Whatever you are able of power. Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 60. Moreover, the Prophet wasallam said, Indeed, strength is in archery. Allah exalted be, he states in the Quran that the brothers of Yusuf said, Indeed, we went racing each other. Surah Yusuf, Ayah 17 i.e. competing with each other through archery or running. Abu Huraira also narrated that the Prophet said, no reward should be given for a competition except that made between animals with hooves like camels or with or those with cloven hooves like horses or arms with blades in fencing related by the five compilers of the hadith. So this hadith shows that entering competition for seeking a certain reward is permissible. Many scholars stated the anonymous juristic agreement on the permissibility of racing and contest. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, horse racing and archery and such like warlike contest enjoined by Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are permissible as they are useful in jihad, fighting in the cause of Allah. He also said, wrestling, running races and the like are acts of obedience to Allah if they are intended for rendering Islam victorious, look. So the mean becomes something that you, Allah will reward you for it. Because the intent behind it is to render Islam victorious. And the Shaykh said, and taking reward or price for winning the, them is also permissible. It's also permissible. Such sports are permissible if there is no harm in them. If there is no harm in them. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, whatever distracts one from performing what Allah has ordained is prohibited, like soccer, matches, or the like. Because these, ikhwan, brothers and sisters, they distract the people from worshiping Allah. So the time the salat comes in, they are distracted watching the soccer matches. So this is not permissible. Even if it is, or if it is, the Sheikh said, even if it is originally permissible, such as selling, trade, and other activities, because you should not be selling and doing trade at the time of the salat. Because what's going to happen if you do that? This might lead you to not to pray on time until the time of the salat expires. Even though. It's halal to sell and trade and all that. If they become, if they divert you, 
activities, the idol divert themselves with and all kinds of sports that do not help in achieving a legal purpose. All such acts are prohibited. Scholars paid such great attention to this issue that they used to specify a chapter in their well-known volumes and the writings for it, entitling it Chapter of Heroism, on Heroism. And heroism is of two, if four kinds. Horsemanship, contest, and how to attack and retreat with horses. Second, archery, contest, or their equivalent according to the every age. Number three, spear, throwing, and marksmanship, contest. Number four, fencing, contest. Whoever excelled in these four kind has completed the aspect of heroism. It is permissible to race on foot as in running races or using any riding or pack animals. And Imam Al-Qurtubi, may Allah have mercy on him, said, there is no disagreement on the permissibility of horsemanship, the racing, racing through other riding beasts and foot racing such as running, Similarly, archery, contest, and other weapons, weapon contests are permissible for those who are considered training, who are considered training for fighting in the cause of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ raced with Aisha radiallahu anha and wrestled with Rukana and beat him. Salama Ibn al-Akwa also raised with a man from al-Ansar in the presence of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The competition for a certain reward or <clears throat> the competition for a certain reward or prize is impermissible except in camel riding races, horsemanship and archery contests. For the Prophet ﷺ said, no reward should be, should, be, should be given competition except that made among animals with hooves, like camels, or those with cloven hooves, like horses, or arms, blades, in fencing, related by the five compilers of Hadith on the authority of Abu Hurairah, radiallahu anhu arda. This means that it is impermissible to get a reward for a prize, for a competition, except for camel riding races, horsemanship, and archery contest. For these are the tools of war. The Prophet ﷺ enjoined Muslims to learn and master. The meaning of the aforesaid hadith is that it is impermissible to receive prizes for other kinds of competitions. The hadith may also mean that these three are the worthiest kind of competitions to be practiced due to their significance, significant and general benefit. Thus, we can say that every competition that benefits religion is permissible. As indicated in the story of Abu Bakr and Rukana, Al-Imam Al-Qayyim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala said, as for betting on the victory of Islam or materialization of any of its signs as done by Abu Bakr Siddiq it is the worthiest kind of competition and it is more entitled to be permitted than bedding through mark, markmanship horsemanship and camera riding races it is the worthiest and most significant sort of competition with regard to the benefit it achieves to the religion. The Sheikh said, there are, there are five conditions for a competition to be valid. Specifying, the first one, specifying the riding animal through seeing them. Number two, the riding animal have to be the same kind. Contestant archers are also to be specified as the purpose behind the exercise is to find out their competence 
and skill in archery. Number three, specifying the distance so as to identify the, the winner in running races and the skilled sharpshooter in archery or the like. The beginning and the end of the race have to be clearly identified and agreed upon for the purpose is to know who will win. And this will not be achieved except through complete equality in their aims. Number four, the prize should be known and should be something lawful. Number five, the competition has to be completely free from gambling. That is the reward, the prize should be, the prize should be offered by someone else. Someone else, not the competitors, no, do not, not those who are involved in the race, because this will be gambling, it will be someone else, other than the contestant, or by only one contestant. If the prize belongs to the contestant, permissibility of the matter is disputable, i.e. whether it is permissible or not, except with a non-contestant who shares in case of profit and does not share in case of loss. Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, chose not to stipulate and said, non-taking means is the, the, the one who is not participating, is worthier and fairer than having the reward prize from one of the contestants. It also helps more to achieve the aim of both contestants, which is proving the incompetence of the other. Having a financial reward in this way is permissible. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah concluded saying, I do not know of any of the Prophet's companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stipulated a muhallil, someone who is outside, he's not a contestant. It was only known to have been done by Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib, after whom people take this convention. Due to the above, we can conclude that, is it that, the permissible, that the permissible competition is of two kinds. The first, competition that accomplishes legal and legal Islamic benefit, like training for jihad and seeking knowledge. Number two, competition which is intended for entertainment, in which there is no harm. The first kind is the one in which it is permitted to receive a prize within the aforementioned conditions. However, the second type of competition is permissible, provided it does not distract one from a duty or divert one from remembering Allah or offering prayer. Yet, it is impermissible to get a prize for the latter kind of contest. Unfortunately, people nowadays waste a lot of time, a lot of their time and money in that kind of entertaining context which are of no benefit to Muslims. We seek refuge with Allah and there is no power or strength save in Him. So the Shaykh finished the chapter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the Shaykh and to make us benefit from this beneficial knowledge. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. وصلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم